we move on to very important uh, endowment oration this is uh, dr a karnakaran endowment oration in this juncture i would like to point out uh, in our ima branch we have a unique committee this is called the academic committee in the academic committee uh, comprised of uh, professor eli ladasan again he is a pharmacology giant and also the dr ums fondly called as a ums is a uh, meenakshi sundaram is a neurology giant he is working in sims hospital and uh, none other than uh, dr venkata soy is a radiology giant along with this a committee our uh, president and secretary and treasurer and also the communication secretary will work together uh, to form an academic uh, committee and choose the very good important lectures so credit goes to all the committee members especially the elil sir and ums sir venkata sai sir and communication secretary and president now i like to hand over the entire proceedings to dr ums and dr aravin they are going to chair the session uh, the speaker is a professor uh, lakshmi narsimhan then over to dr ums and aravin good evening good evening and thank you may I ask uh, dr arvin to start the proceedings yes sir good afternoon everybody this is dr karnakaran endowment oration so a few words about dr karnakaran sir the sir was born in 812 1956 sir kindly be louder sir please yes sir dr karnakaran photograph is available can you put it up or shall i put it up hi please, can sir. you put it up sir i'll put it up yes sir. give me a minute i'll put it up Arvind ji, Arvind ji. Ah, yes sir, yes sir. Unja sa sa sound ko unja tui kudunga. Ipa kya kya sir? Hello. Ah, ah ipa yes, yes. Clear, clear, ah, clear, yes, clear, clear, yes, clear. Yes sir, clear, yes sir. Clear, yes sir. Clear, yes sir. Liver, liver, liver. Unda pesaringa. You are talking from the liver. Amma <laughs> <laughs> ji. Okay sir. Uh, Dr. Karna Karan sir mm, was uh, born in eight twelve nineteen fifty six. He has done his MBBS, DLO, and MSCNT all from prestigious Madras Medical College. He joined government service in 1989. After a short stint of two years in primary health center, he joined Stanley Medical College and he was there for 12 long years. Then MMC three years and uh, Kanya Kumari Medical College one year, Velour one year and Chengalpattu three years. And he has worked in private setup also, SRM three years and Madhav Medical College for two years. He has a huge teaching experience of UG 23 years and PG 18 years. He is an examiner for various universities like MJR University, NTR University, Kerala University, Pondicherry, and of course Balaji Medical College. He is a question paper setter, as and he has organized various conferences, guest lectures, he has chaired various sessions, and as such in ENT he has conducted many live surgery workshops, workshops as well as cadaver workshops, which is very important for them. and uh, he has once removed a 15 cm long fish bone from the trachea of a fisherman and helped with to save the patient's life as well as the family he is a member of the our, our prestigious ima kodambakkam as well as various ent associations and his another interest is asthma and allergy clinic which he is associated for more than 30 years and he has, collect, he has conducted allergy tests for more than 500 people and he has cured many now i request professor meenakshi sundaram sir to introduce his speaker as well as the topic Thank you, sir. Over to Professor Minakshi Sundaram, sir. Thank you, thank you, Professor Arvin. Yes, sir. It is uh, indeed a honor to be given the job of introducing a forty-year-long friend, uh, Professor Lakshmi Narasimhan. Professor Lakshmi Narasimhan was uh, one year senior to me in college, so I really don't need to see a CV at all. I know a lot about him. And uh, he is from Madurai Medical College, where he did his MBBS and MD, and then did his DM Neurology from Madras Medical College. He was always an academically oriented person, and uh, we have had a lot of academic interactions, and uh, have worked together a lot in many many academic activities. So he is at present the director of the prestigious Madras Institute of Neurology, of which. Many of us are alumni and is considered to be one of the and is one of the oldest departments of neurology in the country. And uh, he holds the prestigious position of the director now, and is doing a very very creditable job. 
and uh, he's uh, and i'm also proud to say that my son is his student and uh, qualified under his uh, tutorship um, may you know, he is known to be a very good orator and uh, when we discussed about the topic for the oration and uh, he suggested that <laughs> you would talk about approach to uh, gate abnormalities you know neurology is about all about observation initially after which we do a detailed examination so in observation many a time like my teacher professor vel murugendran used to say the patient walks into your consulting room and comes in and sits down and talks to you if you don't make a diagnosis in the first two minutes at least roughly about which system is involved and what it could be then in your lifetime you won't make a diagnosis in that patient so that's how important gait is and uh, so today would be a very interesting topic i look forward like all of you to the topic and to listen to my very good friend professor lakshmi narasimhan professor lakshmi narasimhan please thank you thank you sir sir is my is my screen visible sir yeah visible sir yes, yes sir i mean yes, uh, i'm audible sir very yes, much yes. sir yes yes yes, yes. the outset i thank the the ima kodambakkam branch which is one of the most prestigious branch in the city of chennai mm-hmm. i go from shekhar sir period and i have always you know i have seen lot of doyens of the city of various branches are members of kodambakkam ima and i have heard quite a lot of things but when meenakshi told me that uh, that he can you give this oration i was really it was a great honor bestowed on me am i am grateful to the entire uh, the secretary the president and every one of you for giving me this opportunity and uh, uh, secondly as a tradition that in any oration this is in, in fact uh, just and uh, professor already has been uh, briefed by uh, dr arvin about his uh, uh, the biodata of uh, dr karnagaran one of the greatest otorhinolaryngologist by fashion what surprised me i thought it was a fish bone but he has taken about a 15 cm long fish itself from the trachea of a fisherman and he saved his life which was marked and he has saved so many lives the teacher in various medical college and trained many post graduates and been an examiner for many of his students so it's a great pride and honor it's a double honor I was to uh, I chose this topic of the story of a hobby horse and single hunter animal as you know that the hobby horse the poikal kudrai and the single hunt camel has, uh, there are a lot of varieties of camel the double hunt camel the single hunt camel and the uh, single hunt camel is always called the dromedary Sir, audio is not all right, sir. I think I think there's an audio drop, sir. Professor Ellen, uh, audio is dropping. Sometimes when the video plays, the audio is not good. Sir. Uh, look, Lakshmi, we can't hear you. one suggestion is that he can cut off his own video so that we can hear his voice well can you hear me now no it's it, it, now? no no we it's very it's very feeble it says that you're speaking from inside a well hello i'm sorry sir i said of you start with uh, dr karunakaran we we couldn't hear you much yeah. just a second i just 
Sorry, he's continuing to speak, sir. Can you please sir, call uh, him? Yeah, can, can you call up Professor Lug Ellen, sir, please? No, I, I don't think he's speaking now. I think he's still sitting. Okay. No, your audio is not heard, Lakshmi. Sir, UMS, you phone the person out there. Call funny person, phone the UMS, sir. Phone funny, okay, I'll call him. Phone the line lavanga. Yeah, President Ero Pandra, our own, our Google giant, our Enomo Pandra, Pandi Pagra. What happened in EMS? I have a planet. UFO, UFO. I UFO. I UFO. Not only you, that's only flying. I say fly. oh, only fly. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, we yes, can hear sir. you. Now it has come. Yes, yes. Now we yeah, can. Yeah. Can, you, can you hear me, sir? I'm sorry. Extremely sorry about the whole thing, sir. Sorry. I apologize. No, no, no. No, no. no issue, no, sir. No. Sir, no. E Please you are the brain, sir. You are the brain in our program. Yeah, no Sagajan, issues. Sir. If we are seeing it, Amma, sir. please go ahead. Sir. When I start, from here, you need to start, sir. From here, you yes. need to start. Yes, sir. Yeah. D. 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 I, I, I chose the story of a hobby horse and a single hump kennel, as uh, Professor UMS uh, rightly stressed. Half of the diagnosis will be over once you observe the gait of a person walking into your chamber. And if you, as all the doyens of neurology has insisted to observe the gait, this is a very, very important, simple observation in neurology, which gives quite a lot of information. So that's why I chose this hobby horse. Hobby horse is nothing but the poikal uh, pudirai. And uh, you can see that this is the single humped camel. You carefully walk, what are the changes? If you, if you observe the hind legs, four legs, and the pelvic tilt and all, you will understand that the the it, I'll come back to you why I chose this later in my talk. Gait disorders are encountered in more than half of the patients admitted in neurology. There are three components of gait: the locomotion, the balance, and the ability to adapt to the environment. You don't know what such a complex motor act is being carried out the brain every second. So many external uh, ob obstacles. You don't even bother your body, your brain observes everything and then overcomes. There are see, three systems per gate. The afferent sensory visual, proprioceptive and the vestibular. The or continuously giving feedback to the brain and the efferent nerves, muscles, bones, joints keep moving and the surveillance is by the higher centers in the brain. Really looking at the gate circle of Murray and Olsen, you know that the various phases of gait, there are double support, there is single limb support, the swing phase and the uh, stance phase. And if you look at the pressure distribution where the heel strike, so the heel strike of one uh, leg to the heel strike of the same limb is called a, a step and the stride is heel strike of one uh, leg to the heel strike, the other. There are a lot of gait matrices. I don't want, I just wanted to, I'll just look at this video. Can you see the video, sir? Can you see the video? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yes, sir. It's sir. It's sir. Very well. Very well. You can see the complex, the gait, the sequence of various muscles acting on this in tandem. Nothing bothers your brain. You casually walk. Not only that, there are so many obstacles in the world. You keep talking on your cell phone. You overcome listen some puddles on your way or anything. You don't stamp on anything. It's a, it's a beautiful act. If you really look at it, such a complex motor act. So 
as i told you there are so many gait matrices like the velocity the cadence is the number of steps in a given time the step length is the distance covered during the swing phase of a leg the stride length the distance covered during a gait cycle the step width the step height the step symmetry the step coordination all so we the, in the gait lab we asking them to walk on a mat which has got lot of sensors all these parameters we get and we analyze this coming to the locomotor circuitry the you know the the cortex has the how and the basal ganglia and the thalamus is the uh, modifies the motor program the brain stem and cerebellum they, they regulate the fine aspects fine tuning of the entire gait and sends signals to the spinal cord where there are pattern generators in the spinal cord so the brain in the cerebral cortex enables the precision stepping goal and direction directed movement modulates postural reflexes plans adaptation to the external stimuli at the same time integrates multimodal sensory information including location gravitational force and feedback of direction of movement as you all know the pedunculo ponte nucleus in the brain is a very important structure in the uh, ponto mesencephalic junction and this pedunculo ponte uh, nucleus has got reciprocal connections with the barrington's nucleus which is a pontine micturition center which is this reciprocal connections are lacking in lower animals so if you look at the cattle and all while they walk they can micturate whereas in humans it is very difficult so that is why when the bathroom is uh, occupied they what they what they call is a pee dance you keep moving the legs so that you don't uh, have a social embarrassment so the gait center in the pedunculo ponte nucleus which is as a um, locomotor a brain stem locomotor region in the which is one of the most important Uh, center is the pedunculo ponte nucleus the cerebellar locomotor neurons center both these things feed a common pattern generator which is uh, spread across the lumbosacral segments and this pattern generators produce such a i showed such a complex sequential development and deciphering the, the a uh, couple of years back edward musa john o'keefe and may brit musa won the nobel prize for physiology for the the human gps and the human gps has got place neurons which are specific place neurons in the hippocampus depending upon the location in the loop and the grid cells in the medial entorhinal cortex surrounds the environment similar to the latitude and the longitude place neurons feed information to the medial entorhinal cortex deciphering the location with respect to surroundings not only deciphering the locations it puts them in lot of landmarks into your memory so that when the next time when you go to the same place your brain is able to recollect the gps map and you are able to move around another interesting thing is you know that the rhythmic stepping in the quadrupeds you don't require the brain for rhythmic stepping they are okay even after a spinal transection the rhythmic stepping is produced in quadrupeds whereas in humans it is not possible the rhythmic stepping is in the brain stem region and so then coming to the clinical assessment of the gait disorders as uh, minakshi professor minakshi said the arising from the chair i'm walking standing walking and every step you look at the stand while you stand look at the posture look at the stance base look at the body sway look at the rhombus and postural reflexes the pull test walking initiation of stepping speed the stance base step length cadence step trajectory associated trunk and arm movements trunk posture trunk turning while walking how many steps it turns does he turns the end block or uses stabilizing steps does he freeze on turning whether other maneuvers like tandem walking walking backwards walking running walking on toes walking on heels all these clinical steps would mark an examination of a gait and complementary this or you look at the gait initiation walking on a narrow pace and the last one is a dual tasking i'll show you on video and come back to that the the a loss of ability to do your tasking is a very early sign of the frontal lobe dysfunction and the rules of gait assessment are one rule one consider the compensations look at whether the slow, low slower gait speed look whether the gait is cautious and or is it reckless where the patient is not aware they get up and then fall down they don't even bother about it 
the wide based gate where the varying step length and locking of knee whether it happens increase cadence as in the festin and gait where the parkinson due to decreased velocity and short step length they increase the cadence voluntary gait control in the basal ganglia diseases loss of automaticity evidence by testing the dual task paradigms the rule 2 limb features and the destabilizing factors rule 3 you look at the stepping for example this is the normal step in the hypokinesia you can look at the short steps as you see in parkinsons and the long steps and with a uh, irregular the distance also variable in dysmetria as you see it in uh, the cerebellar lesions and we'll also look at the symmetry one side is the shorter the other side is longer here and one side longer and the other side shorter hyperkinesia and the dysmetria the shorter ones is can be the due to the weakness as in hemiplegia so variability the oscillatory uh, ones and the variable gates the cortical gate where again there can be you can see the different symmetry in the gate and the narrow base one and the wide base gates which you can see by analyzing the various put width and the rule 4 is recognize specific gait abnormalities and these are the four cardinal rules in analyzing the gait so classification of gait disorders hierarchically it is classified as a lower level gait disorders where skeletal muscular problems and sensory problems the skeletal muscular problems are arthritic the antalgic gait or a myopathic the peripheral neuropathic gait high step edge gait quadriceps gait and a dragging gait and a sensory problem sensory vestibular and visually taxing when you look at this for example all of you know you must have seen the high step edge gait the high step edge gait can happen in uh, in in a, in a common peroneal nerve injury or l5 radiculopathy or can also happen when there is a post the proprioceptive fibers in the uh, lower limbs are affected and uh, if you very carefully look at this to differentiate them in a proprioceptive uh, loss due to a large fiber neuropathy as in vitamin b12 or any other uh, uh, the posterior column involvement the landing of the foot will be on the heel and they stamp so heavily and not only that they also have a double stamp it's also that is why it is called a stamping gait so high step edge and stamping is classical of uh, posterior column whereas high step edge alone is characteristic of foot drop and l5 common peroneal and l5 radiculopathy and uh, similar been very 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 subtle things which you keep learning on your practice and by observation will help you the second thing is the intermediate level where the basal ganglia the cerebellum and the uh, the uh, pyramidal tract all play the intermediate and the higher level is where the planning of the gait planning is involved when the cerebral cortex level which is a higher level gait infection so lower level essentially you look at the lower motor, motor neuron the intermediate level gait disorders are in the basal ganglia and the pyramidal tract and the higher level is in the cortex so let me take you to the tour of a gait cycle and first i'll take you to the zoo as i have assured you of hobby uh, horse and the thing and uh, we should go now to the first we go to the aviary department where all of you know that this is the duck and gait so waddling gait bilateral proximal weakness exaggerated alteration of the lateral trunk movements exaggerated elevation of hip myopathy lens and myasthenia are the three things if you really look at and you can watch it so the waddling gait the duck gait then we go to the next in the row this is a cock walk gait i'll show what is a cock walk gait is a high stepping gait strutting on toes flexed elbows erect spine seen in manganese toxicity pank associated neurodegeneration on scar 3 you can see this is the this boy is a pantothenic kinetic associated degeneration which is a this is not exactly typical but still we suspected this and is had a erect spine and a, a dystonia and uh, this was uh, one of the uh, the next one cock walk gait in a spinocerebellar uh, degeneration uh, 
phenotype, you can see, you can see this girl. This is a classical cockwig. This I take it, taken it from the literature for. The, the next one is again in manganese accumulation due to SLE3 mutation from the journal of this is a top one. So then from the duck and uh, we move on to the dromedary as already I have told you, the desert enclosure, the dromedary head, the single humped camel, the Bacchlian species, the double humped camel. And there are a lot of interesting facts about the camel, which you will love to read. And the dromedary gait is the rolling high stepping gait with the protrusion of buttocks due to excessive lar doses seen in patients with generalized dystonia, especially DYT1 primary dystonia. And then we move on to the horse hobby and horse encounter. They are the hobby horse. And this is the uh, very famous uh, French sports. Not only in French, and we also have so many long, long ago, we have the dance of the Hoikal Kudre. And this is the hobby horse gait, where toe walking, stiff legs, and a skipping gait seen in DYT4 mutation due to a tub 4 a mutation. And interestingly, these people have uh, this whispering dysphonia and dystonia uh, in the laryngeal dystonia as well as the, the genline dystonia. So then we exit the uh, zoo and then we move on to the performance theater where we'll show you a dance show, the dancing gait, the coliform movements superimposed on gait, resulting in dysmetria, resulting in ataxic gait. You can see most often the choreic patients, you, you can see this man tries to camouflage his abnormal gait. You can see he's got a wide swinging movement, uh, which he, he also has some Another case of hunting to the Korean which we recently had. You can see the, the steps are so bizarre and you got so much of flow. You, you can see the facial grimaces in the Korean moments on the face. So one more thing is again this gentleman now you can see the class of Korea. So this is the then the other dyskinesia is more stable. The as you know, the Paisa syndrome where the patient leans onto the side. So what happens is when the center of gravity uh, shifts, when the balance is not there, so the body uh, makes certain adjustments. These are the compensations which the body makes so that the patient's the gait is stable. One such compensation is uh, leaning to the sides, which happens in Paisa syndrome in, in MSA. And uh, sometimes the anterocolis of the neck is moved forward. The retrocolis of the neck is moved backwards as in PSP. And cantomacarmia, the the, uh, the spine is bent in, in the way. So then coming to the bouncing gait, in a case of post-anoxic encephalopathy called Lansardon following a cardiac arrest, you get positive and negative myoclonus bouncing gait. Say, say, you can see. You see, it looks like I got... Anyway. So then coming to the imbalance, the ataxic gait. So ataxic gait, as you know, broad based, the steps vary every length, the lower limb dysmetria and the instability, the knee knocking to reduce hypermetria and the instability. Cerebellar is not worse by eye closure, sensory worsened by eye closure, and the vestibular ataxic gait. You ask them to move the head sidewards and uh, uh, the head movements keep while walking, ask them to per perform head movements. It is the gait worsens on movement of the head, it adds a clue that it could be vestibular. So, the three types of ataxic gait you can see, watch this young boy. His brother is also having early onset cerebral ataxia. You can see, watch the, the, the broad face, the steps are bizarre. He keeps one step, not of varying lengths, and you can see this. So, then Coming to the stiff man show, the stiff gait, the, the leg extension, plantar flexion, leg circumduction and hip flexion, unilateral is circumduction gait. As all of you would be aware, 
and when it becomes bilateral the patients tend to cross the legs collars as in scissoring spasticity is velocity dependent hypotonia and becomes more prominent when the patient is asked to hurry up stiff gait is also seen in stiff person syndrome neuromyotonia and myotonia you can see the classical hemiplegic gait you can see not able to clear the swings out because and then is back so the subconduction one and this is uh, uh, scissoring you can see when you ask him to walk faster the leg starts scissoring so you can see that the leg has started scissoring now so look at this boy young boy in born errors of metabolism with the pyramidal movement normal uh, birth and uh, normal birth and development and only thing is started scissoring recently so you can see so they had a bipyramidal sign so this is another syndrome called stiff person syndrome due to the gerd abnormality the where one of the you can see how stiff is there so then the basal ganglia as you know that the uh, parkinson disease stoop posture narrow base camptocomia where the uh, there is a stooping the forward uh, balance there is a postural instability and falls gait short shuffling gait and uh, uh, not just the festination and lack of arm swing in the tremors of the hand turns tries to turn end block freezing weight and you can see this fact you can see there's a small is leaning on the sides on to the right side the steps are very short and you can see the blink rate is very much reduced and then you can see how he turns takes multiple steps to turn or observe all these small small things and then there's a slight freezing there on the turning and then the stop you can see the freezing also comes so look for the freezing on color so and then freezing of gait disabling feature in many forms of parkinsons experienced during initiation can be due to turning encountered obstacles and on dual tasking uh, freezing can happen during the initiation at close quarters turning or dual tasking a lot of phenomenon on pseudo on fog when off fog and all so levodopa resistant freezing advanced pd progressive progressive freezing of primary progressive freezing of gait and normal pressure hydrocephalus look at this gentleman this is the gait uh, uh mat with all sensors you can see he is uh, is frozen now is not able to take the next step and uh, is making all kinds of efforts his tries arm swings and other other things make small subtle jerks to move uh, so uh, this is this is freezing and then you can see he's still struggling and so amount of efforts he has to put to move the foot so look at this gentleman as i told you you know when we we asked to give a ball to just throw it up and catch the ball while walking you can't do both see i am always uh, i should say i think all of us i am jealous of the younger generation always because their motor circuitry is blessed for multitasking you know you can see all the boys operating four five things at the same time as you become age aged your ability to perform multitasking becomes lesser and lesser as evidence in the dual even dual tasking two task at the same time you find it very difficult whereas an youngster of this years he has he does something with his mobile something with his ipad something on his headphone he has so many activities at the same time and and sometimes i always feel this the motor circuitry is far more evolved in all this younger generation by in handling multiple tasks then the dystonic task the, the gait early common manifestation of a dystonic gait is a very important condition where the extremities when you have subtle dystonia is called dopa responsive dystonia when you observe this in the legs especially a small dose of dopa will completely relieve them and uh, i have already told you about the dromedary gait of dyt1 and the hobby horse gait of uh, dyt4 both are dystonic types of dystonic gaits walk, walk walk at watch at this young girl 
can see there is a striatal toe there is an inversion uh, on the foot and while she walks in this girl had a the typical dopa responsive dystonia and low dose of dopamine she got leave and the dystonia and parkinson just look at this girl what is surprising is i don't know about this uh, normally if you know that the blink rate is reduced in uh, parkinson's and, uh, she's a drug naive parkinson's come to us from duty for it you can look at this uh, very high blink rate is surprising to me i didn't know what is it so here dystonia she has got mask like phases but a very high increase blink rate we are working on this case we really don't know what is the diagnosis but just wanted to show you that this is one kind of wave then uh, finally uh, we have seen the lower level of gates in the form of waddling gait high stepage gait and all and then the middle level gates and parkinson's gait cerebellar ataxic gait the mask like gait and the hemiplegic and the scissoring gait now we are going the higher order gait trip to higher level disorders frontal gait disorders isolated regression failure frontal disequilibrium subcortical disequilibrium cautious gait and psychogenic gait frontal disequilibrium loss of balance with disordered stepping you lose the art of uh, rhythmic stepping as they become uh, when they develop uh, frontal dysfunction otherwise called uh, apraxic gay burns at brunt's ataxia or apraxia and you can see this lady not able to initiate the rhythmic stepping so found he finds as if her feet are glued to the ground and uh, you can see i just wanted to tell you one interesting thing is parkinsons is a disorder of is is a, a disorder of essentially volitional movement the reflex movements are retained and that is why you get kinesia paradoxica when the fire have breaks they are the one to run faster so the, you can we all of us we when there were whenever there is a freezing we use what is called a parkinson cane with a laser beam any obstacle they are able to overcome so when they freeze you always give them uh, ask them to throw a hand hold a hand light throw it and then ask them to clear the light or you can they can use in the house they can use the mats like a steps they can draw like steps in their in their uh, way to the bathroom so that the obstacles the the reflex movement comes in when they climb the stairs and uh, or uh, that helps them to overcome the freezing there are very few non pharmacological ways by, by which you can overcome then isolated ignition failure here the issue is only with ignition and later on they are able to walk better difficulty in initiation and sustaining locomotion evolves in isolation for 3 years freezing while initiation steps begin short and subsequently you can see i just show you a couple of this look at this gentleman And then once he once he clears that he is able to walk normally. So seen in variants of PSP, uh, the progressive supranuclear palsy, paldo uh, lucian atrophy, the cortico basal syndrome, and the primary latus sclerosis. And in the frontal, there's always a, a difficulty in apraxia, freezing, and short settling trips in frontal gait disorders. There's various etiologies starting from small vessel disease, normal pressure hydrocephalus, Alzheimer's, frontal temporal dementia, and others. and normal pressure hydrocephalus where the patient has a short straight length reduced foot clearance freezing apraxia of gait the urinary incontinence and cognitive decline up gait apraxia urinary decline and the cognitive decline are the three cardinal triads and you can see one as one such patient with normal pressure hydrocephalus you can see the incontinence is having a steady step and you can see the shifts are very small and we has to have support you can see the involuntary movements in the hand also this patient completely improved following a shunt we did an mri cs of flow study which showed a significant stroke volume which is one of the parameter which decides on shunt responsiveness even though the sensitivity is low uh, for this uh, uh, parameter but we we generally do a lp and show that the patient clinically improves and then we take up for shunting so senile gait two patterns are very common one they either become too cautious or they become reckless these are the two things resembling cautious gait they not a separate entity by the most common is vascular or sensory neuropathy and finally to conclude psychogenic gait asthesia abesia or acrobatic gait unusual patterns of stance dramatic with lurching 
in falls are infrequent even if fall they do not hurt themselves sustained facial expression morning and hyperventilation just for So, so coming to the treatment, the antispasticity. For spasticity, we use baclofen, dantrolene, and tizalidine, the most of the blockers, and botulinum toxin we use in the you know for removal of spasticity. Anticholinergics, baclofen, botulinum toxin to treat dystonia. Neuroleptics like tetrabenazine to treat the coriform gait. Antiepileptics and clonazepam to treat myoclonin. Dalfampiridine in multiple sclerosis. Dopaminergic drugs in Parkinson's. Levodopa resistant. Levodopa resistant um, methylphenidate uh, through noradrenergic mechanisms is useful. Duloxetine and high dose of selenium also helps in. Donopazil can be in in, uh, in primary progressive freezing. Donopazil can be used in levodopa resistant freezing of gait. The in Parkinson disease we use levodopa. Vestibular diseases we use vestibular sedatives. Acetosolamide in episodic ataxia and methylphenidate and donopazil. And dorsal rhizotomy surgical. Ventricular peritoneal stand for NPH and subthalamic nucleus stimulation for progressive. And they are also looking at the pedunculopontine nucleus as a target for certain types of gait disorders. And DBS or glob globus pallidum internum is a good alternative. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Lakshmi. Hope my videos played properly without any lag. Yes, yes, yes. All of them played very well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. It was a treat to watch those videos and hear your lecture. Thank you very much, Professor Lakshmi Narasimha. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, the President will now read out the citation, as is the custom. President, sir. Yes, I'm available. Sir, please. As is the custom, uh, please read out the uh, citation. I, I will do that. I will do that. I need a larger screen. So let me take my copy of the citation and read it out. Please, please. Give me a minute, please. Sir, I projected on the screen, sir. I know, I know. But my screen is so small. Okay, sir. I need a slightly larger one. So just give me a minute. I have a copy. I'll just take it up and uh, read it out. Yeah. Well, looks like I don't have a copy. I'll make do with yours. Can you zoom whatever you have on the screen? Yes, Is it okay, yeah, sir? That's it. Yeah, that's okay. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Lakshmi Narayan, it was a very great. Uh, Professor Lakshmi Narasimhan, it was an honor to hear your lecture. It was very nice to go through the eight disorders with you all over again. It is a privilege for me to read out this citation to you. Dr. A. Karnagaran Endowment Appreciation Award. On this date, the 29th August 2021, this citation is awarded to Professor R. Lakshmi Narasimhan. He is an eminent neurologist and a great teacher of neurology. He has received numerous awards, including Best Scientist Award from Tamil Nadu Council of Science and Technology, a ATLAS Award from Elsevier Publications for Global Best Paper Across All Disciplines, Palatuki Award from American Academy of Neurology, prestigious A.B. Baker Presidential Award for Global Best Teacher in Neurology from American Academy of Neurology, Best Teacher Award in Neurology from Kilpock Medical College and Dr. MGR Medical University, 
best doctor award from government of tamil nadu emmy award from st joseph group of institutions best paper award for, for titled mri negative stroke from american academy of neurology he is currently the treasurer of the indian academy of neurology active member and international advisor of american academy of neurology executive member of world federation of neurology in the second term liaison member of who on neurological policies founder member of south asian cochrane network founder member of advocacy wing in indian academy of neurology executive member in nsi indian epilepsy society member of ips and advocacy tropical neurology subsections of ian life member of indian medical association indian academy of neurology and association of physicians of india be president and members of the indian medical association chennai kodambakkam branch feel proud to honor a doyen in the medical field thank you very much sir for being with us today thank you sir thank you so much it's a great honor and uh, all my my, my pronouns to your father sir thank you thank you i will convey thank you thank you thank you, thank you. in view of the time i'm sorry but uh, there are some questions usually we don't appreciate we don't take questions for narration but uh, ima kodambakkam we always uh, helps um, ask the questions and clarify the doubts but due to paucity of time i i apologize that we will not be able to take the questions today and uh, we move on to our next uh, Uh, you can forward that to my mail i can reply to that yes sir yes sir i will sir if you can sir if you don't mind if you can share your email then we would uh, i will make sure that the uh, I, i have his email id thank you sir i will put it in the chat box thank you sir kindly um, pass on our thanks to the chat person yes sir priya kindly Yes, sir. Thank the chairperson. And I thank our chairpersons, Dr. Yumes, sir, and Dr. Arvind, sir, for sharing the session. And it has been a really um, uh, appreciable session. We just, I think, as a as a non-neurologists, we had such a, I had such a glimpse of uh, exactly. It was really appreciable, sir. 